I V M. TFG Football is an IVM production, and you can also check out their other awesome shows like Geek Fruit with fellow and television geek stages Jishnu and Dinkar as they discuss the world of science fiction and nerd culture. You're listening to TFG Football. Welcome to a new episode of the TFG Indian Football Podcast. I'm your host Shuju, and I have both of our boys, uh, Chiranjit and Kevin, joining us. Uh, a great day because you know, uh, good footballing action last night. But yesterday, there was only one game that was interesting. The other game was in blah, like we spoke about. Uh, Delhi versus North East, but it so sort of turned out it looked like it will be ending in a goalless draw. But towards the end, uh, Delhi looked uh, in a better place, and their uh, star player Kalu Uche scored a winner for them. Uh, it was a one nil victory to Delhi. But the other game that happened, the earlier fixture, Neruka versus uh, Sochi's brothers. We thought, you know, it would also it looked like it's going to end in a goalless draw, and you know, kind of putting. Neroka once again taking a hit on their title race, but 86th minute strike by Aaron Williams was enough for them to uh, clinch the match, and you know now they are on top of the points table, which makes things even more interesting now. So I bring in Kevin here. Kevin, how boring was the match, or how good was the match, and how good is this result for Neroka FC? So every time we expect something to happen in in a particular way, you know, it's always the other way around. Churchill were expected to be, you know, a little more dominant, but it wasn't the case yesterday. And uh, in a way, you know, Neroka has has lost that form that we we saw them uh, come out shining with. And yesterday was another example. Uh, it it didn't look like a boring match, but then it looked like as if you know, they they weren't you know giving giving their best. Both teams mm. look like so they were holding back something. So in that case, you you will see a few uh, a lot less goals to be to be uh, uh, no, expected, and and it did turn out to be just a one goal match. Neroka were you know, on the offensive in the second half, uh, but but Churchill brothers, uh, I I think if they are away travels now, that's taking mm-hmm. a hit on them. So no, uh, uh, the the form that they showed uh, when they were at home, it it was good. And and you know, it was difficult to get past them, and now that they are playing a, a lot of away matches, the, the game is slightly gone down. It, it does happen when when you're at home, you you show your best form, and, and uh, uh, obviously uh, Neroga will be still in the hands now. Now that uh, three points are in the bag and they have gone above Minerva, uh, they've all obviously played more more games than uh, everybody. So it was kind of an okay game. Uh, didn't really, you know, expect a explosive uh, game from both sides. Uh, now uh, uh, they're it, it, just keeping themselves open for the race and uh, and expecting that some uh, winner were to drop points. But that's even difficult to happen. Otherwise, I think I think it's, uh, they're right, right there. Not really challenging, but uh, hopeful. Hmm. Well, Sanjeev, how do you uh, reckon this win, and what does it do to the title race? Well, title race is uh, <laughs> still wide open. Um, Neroka, I just uh, they they just have two matches left. Uh, one is against Mohan Bagan, another is against uh, East Bengal. Uh, neither uh, neither is a easy game, uh, and uh, Neroka have this major disadvantage, which is something AIFF does to all the uh, newcomer clubs. I think. Uh, you remember Aizol FC's uh, uh, debut season in the top division. Uh, they were finishing matches uh, a week or so before everybody else was finishing matches, and uh, yeah. that that was one major point of con- uh, contention from Jahar Das. That uh, you know we are in a relegation race, and you are letting everybody else play matches after us so that they can have their targets set. Uh, mm-hmm. It's it's not fair. Same thing Niroka can say here that uh, their last match is on 27th February, you know, and uh, and Minerva Punjab play their last game uh, on 7th of March, and uh, East Bengal also have uh, games after that. So yeah, Niroka have been playing their matches, uh, you know, ahead of everybody else, and even if they win uh, the rest of the matches, they will get to uh, 37. And uh, of course, it's a it's a big question mark uh, whether they will be able to keep winning. 
but uh, if they do they'll uh, they'll be at uh, 37 and then minerva punjab and east bengal can uh, you know try to work out a combo where, where they just uh, you know go over the mark afterwards so it, mm. it's it's almost i i see almost no possibility for neroka to actually go ahead and win the league but uh, it's it's interesting you know you you just saw uh, neroka take on churchill brothers they knew uh, what churchill brothers had done in the earlier matches uh, it, they were not taking any chances they were happy to sit and wait uh, physical game a lot of uh, you know uh, back and forth a lot of action in the midfield uh, you know it, I, i don't really think uh, either team was creating too much pressure uh, as the game was going towards the end but yeah they got the, they got the goal aaron williams got his name on the score sheet some people were pissed about the goal uh, I, i think i think it's a it's an okay goal uh, but uh, yeah it it just makes the league look more interesting because now now we just we just don't know i mean there's that possibility still looming right uh, we we know that neroka are not likely to uh, end up picking it up uh, but you know they still have the advantage what if minerva punjab keep losing what if east bengal keep losing so all those possibilities are open right now and uh, and uh, it's interesting uh, you know it's mm. you know three is better than two we we are having that bigger conversation and and uh, frankly doesn't really matter if neroka win the league or not here's a debutant club you know not not a uh, not a uh, you know debut uh, debuting with uh, full force like bengaluru fc who, who came in as a corporate entry this these this mm. team fought its way up from the second division and right. uh, suddenly uh, towards the end of the league they are at the top of the table that in itself is a huge right. advantage yeah absolutely i mean it's a beauty of football and it's what uh, things can happen uh, as as you said i mean with the irrespective of whether neroga goes ahead and wins the title they're just making the league much more exciting now a lot of things to look forward to and as we end the you know we are in towards the end of the season it's just getting uh, better and better so hopefully this continues and we'll see some great footballing action from all the teams who are in the race for the title now moving on we do we talk about delhi's match i mean Kevin, do you have anything to talk about that game? Delhi vs North East, a breather for Delhi, we can say. I mean, something for pride that they're playing at the moment, because it doesn't look like they're going to qualify for the top six for the, you know, in a straight direct uh, qualification to the Super Cup. But something for the fans. I mean, if they exist, something for them to cheer. No, yeah, that it wasn't a entertainment uh, on the pitch. No, uh, yeah. The 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 offense. Uh, some of the offensive moves were made by northeast uh, being the home team but you you expect more from them you, you don't expect them to just come in front of the goal and uh, in the final third and just give away with a weak shot that's what that's mm-hmm. what was happening you know even though they had most of the possession in the first half it didn't really look like they were threatening on goal and it was a, a easy day for the, for the defense uh, of uh, delhi and then uh, towards the end when you saw one chance coming to so it really made you feel that that was the only chance in the game and uh, the only goal that came in but so overall if you just see there were a lot of chances created by both teams in the entire game but then the conviction was lacking in front of goal that made it look like you know as if uh, it was a game of few chances but it wasn't really the case even the mm. defense was slipping up you know, at multiple occasions so what can you expect from from teams that are lagging at the you no know, lying there at the bottom of the table for so long especially delhi uh, we expected a lot from the from the side that they took cho- cho- from the club and that never never really promised us too much uh, even though they had great players but they never de- delivered and for northeast it was a, it was a case of you know being too little too late abram grant came and tried to fix in a lot of things but you, you can't really make changes you know when, when your squad is not, not the best You can hmm. it probably you know concede a few a few goals less and and uh, the damage is limited but they didn't really go out and show that that they should have been at least in the mid table or deserving of the playoff finish so that is on the field right now the well, i think well, i think they have they just they just run out of steam i think they know they're not playing for anything 
Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it's it's just sad to look at. Uh, but imagine if uh, ISL actually had a promotion relegation system. Yeah, this absolutely. game would have been a firework. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, of course. But uh, we we're gonna have a lot of meaningless games now, going mm-hmm. forward. As we are ending towards the end of ISL. But yeah, yeah. talking about meaningless, I have two clubs that come to my mind from Kolkata. I mean, I don't know. They keep doing something or the other. Of the field to keep attention on them now. The first instance that uh, East Bengal had written a letter, it came news came that you know against the referees, uh, they wanted some new referees or foreign referees before playing the game against it in Minerva. And now it so happens that Bagan also has followed trend that even they have sent a letter to AIS saying that hey, you know what, we need a change of referees because all the decisions are going against us. Seriously, so what's happening with? I mean, writing letters and, you know, all of these ruckus that happens and once again, the Kolkata club's in limelight for the wrong reasons, I say. Why? Why wrong reasons? Uh, those are not meaningless, meaningless letters because uh, we just saw what happened in the uh, Minerva Punjab versus East Bengal game. Three penalties not given. Like, mm-hmm. and, and you had both the clubs, both Minerva and East Bengal uh, saying... We need to fix this refereeing situation because this is a title fight. We don't want it to be spoiled by uh, bad decisions. So, uh, yeah, and and it went, all their uh, apprehensions, all their fears, it actually came true, which is the crazy part. So, of course, they have the right to write a letter and say, fix the refereeing situation now. Uh, obviously, when you when you have East Bengal Mohan Bagan involved, there's going to be some kind of manipulation going on. Uh, you know, they will uh, they will try to arm twist the federation. The federation will try to arm twist them. This is how it goes. Um, Mohan Bagan wrote that letter saying they want the three points uh, uh, in against uh, the, uh, the Chennai City because uh, Chennai City were playing with an in- ineligible player. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, same. Arif Arif got two yellow cards. He stayed on the pitch. Uh, and and by the way, some something unprecedented happened. There was this review uh, uh, of the of the uh, decision to send off Edwin, uh, and uh, and the referee's decision was overturned. The board said, yeah, he can play in the next game. He played against Chennai City uh, when Chennai City played uh, Shillong Lajong on Sunday. So. You, I, I have never seen that happen. Like, refereeing has been, uh, you know, refereeing standards have been in question uh, since forever. But we've had a, a national league in this country since 1996. I don't remember a single case where a red card was overturned uh, and, and a player who had been shown a red card, uh, they said, oh yeah, he can play in the next game. Right? Mm-hmm. And guess who else played? Tarif. Tarif Akhand, who saw two red card, two yellow cards in the game against Mohan Bagan, which actually means he he legitimately got a red card and he should be suspended for the next match. Well, Tarif Akhand got to play, and uh, even uh, Edwin got to play. Like, kya ho hai? Tamasha hai kya? This is a professional league or what? So, if if you are overturning the uh, the decision um, uh, to send off Edwin. You should also make sure that uh, Tarif has to, uh, you know, set out the next game as well. You should uh, retroactively be able to put the red card on him. But you know, this is, I think, I think that's why uh, Mohan Bagan uh, wrote that in uh, in response. Uh, uh, to that's the, because uh, yeah. it was a referee's decision to send off a wrong, wrong player. Yeah. That doesn't mean uh, Mohan Bagan is at a disadvantage and uh, they should be awarded three points. No, I no, no, no. Ridiculous. No, no. I, I, they, yeah, of course, they're not getting happened? it. They, of course, they're not getting it. But this is a pressure tactic. This is uh, arm twisting yeah, tactic. What that's what tactic? it is. This is silly. This is very silly. That's this is not silly at all. Uh, I, uh, I'll. Uh, Take you back to 2015, uh, Calcutta Football League. Mohan Bagan was playing Army FC. Uh, Mohan Bagan won that match. Okay. Uh, but then it turned out for the last five minutes, they didn't have an under-21 player uh, on the pitch. They uh, they replaced one uh, under-21 tw- uh, player with a 22-year-old. And for that, the match was overturned. Uh, and the victory was given to uh, um, Army FC 3-0. So there is a provision. If you have an ineligible player on the field, 
the match is supposed to be uh, given to the other team okay now here's the problem chennai it's not chennai city's fault that uh, tarif was not sent off or the wrong yeah, player was sent off so you know if, if it's done by the club management hmm. and then you can uh, the opposite team can claim it was done by the club management you know yeah. this is the referee who's taking the decision hmm. and you can't point out the referee's mistake to give out you know award three points for that scenario yeah i think absolutely i'm not saying yeah. so it's not it's not silly it's not silly in the sense that dude it, they are they are not trying to they, they don't actually think they will get three points it's yeah. you just you just make uh, uh, you know uh, make these demands to put some pressure on the federation okay because otherwise what reasonable demands have been coming from clubs since forever like some isl teams have asked for like uh, bring back foreign referees uh, even the uh, uh, you know in minerva punjab versus east bengal game uh, they were saying yeah might as well uh, use some referee who will not mess it all up referee com- complaints have been there since the beginning so if well, they have not done anything till now ha huh? it's mostly from the kolkata club demands Yeah, but uh, Minerva Punjab also agreed to East Bengal's demand. You you have uh, similar things. Uh, you have Pune City complaining about refereeing. You had uh, uh, Aizol FC's uh, head coach uh, uh, complaining about refereeing, and uh, yeah, exactly. he got so, sacked. So when you're pointing, so when you're pointing out like referee decisions being pointed out, and if that which is a bigger cause which has been marred both, which has been marred in both, you know, both I League and I S L, and also marred. some good games because we forgotten the matches and we spoke about how referee decision has changed the match so if that was not a bigger cause and if that didn't put pressure on the uh, officials to look at that as a bigger cause how do you think you know talking about say get foreign referees in middle of the season just because your team is not doing well and you know in getting between saying that okay now this player was not uh, supposed to play but now let's give give us three points so that is what we are trying this is, to do this is this is again uh, another how is that putting pressure on the team? yeah of course it's putting the pressure if you have if you have a situation where uh, clubs don't have trust in the referees and they don't even they are even calling into question the uh, the result of a match you know because you need to aiff is is a deep machine you know when when you are uh, trying to you know point out actual problems how may, how often do you think they listen right uh, aiff still talks about aiff talks about uh, you know uh, just try uh, asking the clubs to be more professional and measured well the leagues are not r- being run professionally uh, you know aizol fc still haven't gotten that uh, championship money from last season by the way so that, this is this is this is aiff they they don't listen unless you just uh, make a ruckus and uh, and and create a lot of noise which gets everybody talking and then you have a situation oh shit they are questioning everything they are even questioning the match results so then now maybe we should wake up and uh, do something maybe we should tell the refereeing association yeah, right <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> there we've seen a league in where, where coaches have actually pointed out things they've been sacked you expect yeah. the other league to have co- have the officials woken up saying that hey these these people are pointing out everything so let's take a call now i mean it's ridiculous to even think i mean i know we are hoping for the best from the officials but it's like this stupid to even think about that saying that okay, this will put pressure on them this this is not putting pressure on the uh, referees maybe it's put, putting pressure on the referees later on because no referee wants to be in the middle of uh, that kind of a uh, hullabaloo uh, but but it's true that that uh, chennai city did have ineligible players uh, on the pitch uh, during the match and uh, if if a club tries to selfishly milk it to pressure uh, put the pressure on the uh, federation i think that's that's like it this is all is fair in love and war and this is yeah in in a way this is war so i i don't think mohan bagan actually are expecting to give uh, in uh, expecting aiff to give them three points but this is a way for them to uh, tell aiff that you know if, if we are just going to keep adding uh, and and at one point the camel's back is going to break if all the clubs keep uh, putting uh, so many demands on the system so 
so yeah it, aiff is very close to a crisis and uh, what what do you think happens now like now that they have made a big demand about like they have even questioned the result of a match what happens if in the next mohan bagan game that game is on sunday against neroka the referee makes another like big howler mistake you know this also gets amplified the previous demands everything else gets amplified and and mm. if this keeps happening at one point aiff will lose control so yeah th- this is this is all part of that whole uh, process aiff needs to feel a little insecure on their seats you know that they, they just they've just gone to sleep over this season uh, about about what's really ailing the leagues so mm. yeah it's 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 a bit over the top of course you you know, you know how how mohan bagan or east bengal officials are they they just they just make a lot of noise and uh, stuff and, and it just it just gets hyperbolic yeah, it's just time. noise that's the problem it's just but what what else can you do what else can a club do other than uh, uh, other than raise noise do they uh, what uh, uh, would you prefer if they say like we're not going to play if if you have uh, that referee who kept so many bad decisions if he's assigned to our match we're not going to play then they fo- then they face major punishments AIF will not yeah. be like oh, they will not hesitate saying like okay uh, you didn't play so we'll we'll suspend you that that's what they will say do you think they're going to hesitate so what are they doing against the referee still now have we even heard of a single disciplinary action being taken against any referee we haven't heard yeah, exactly exactly so, so yeah so, so what else can they do only if- only if writing letters solve problems in indian football there would have been so many problems solved already now let's see what happens with this pressure tactic from the east bay from the kolkata clubs if that wakes the as if well and good for indian football if not we continue making the noise now let's slip into a short break now because we've spoken a lot and on the other side we'll talk about tonight's fixture which also in ifl it looks like a great match coming our way because both the teams trying to uh um, make it to the top 4 of ISL and enter the playoffs so fc goa chennai in a good match coming your way we'll talk about that and also probably that upon the i league fixture of tomorrow all of that on the other side of the break hi i'm amit verma the host of the weekly podcast the seen and the unseen in my show i examine the seen effects and the unintended consequences of public policy and private action i show how policies meant to help the poor often end up hurting the poor i've done episodes so far on demonetization gst surgical strikes immigration and mrp and i will continue my forensic assault on the truth in the weeks to come catch the show every monday on the ivm podcast app or any other podcasting app that you prefer or visit seenunseen.in for all the latest updates welcome back guys and here we are uh, talking about tonight's fixture in isl you really have one game that's in isl and uh, chennai and fc are taking on fc goa now both trying to make it to the top 4 i mean while chennai does look like you know they have a better chance here because they're sitting at fourth place with 24 points but goa fighting hard uh sixth place with 20 points now uh, kevin we bring you here what do you have to say about this game i mean a great match coming your way two good teams uh chennai and fc looks like a balanced side when the in terms of attack and defense meanwhile goa are if they have scored the more highest number of goals they were also you know i think second in conceding the num- highest number of goals so what will be the key over here in tonight's clash now well, this is going to be an explosive match obviously uh, both teams vying for that uh, spot in the playoffs so it makes it more interesting because there's something to play for not like bottom of the team uh, bottom of the table clash that that's uh, that being said i say i think uh, chennai and fc have, have obviously you know shown the better uh, uh, capability to hold on to a much more difficult side to play. Uh, right. uh, FC Goa is the one that ha- has needs to, needs to step up because they, they've got everything in them. Uh, but you know, scoring goals does not win you games. You need to stop conceding goals as well. That's yeah. been their problem. Not a single clean sheet in the entire, uh, entire season that they've played. That's a shame for them. Uh, that's going to be a test today as, uh, tonight as well. So Chennai, Chennai and FC have, have been the, that team that is able to you know, grind out results even 
uh, in the most difficult circumstances. Uh, and and John Gregory has been able to, to make that team a you know, fighting one. Uh, and tonight, I think it's everything to play for for both teams. Uh, uh, FC Go have played lesser games than uh, other teams. So they, they think they are at an advantage, but again, we'll go back to the point that uh, you pointed out to you that uh, if you got games in hand and you are not winning those games, it means nothing. You know, you just you know add par with the other teams. Uh, so <laughs> that's so, so that's that's all uh, that's there in the game. Uh, whichever team is uh, whichever team is able to score and then not concede is, is the one that's taking all three points. But it it it's, it will go down to the wire. Uh, we'll not see a clear winner uh, even uh, till the 80th or 85th minute. We even probably might see a late goal coming from either side. So I hopefully uh, FC Goa is able to keep that first clean sheet and uh, even score goals. Mm. So that will make an interesting match. Okay, well, uh, turning back to the one of the commentators who made that comment in the previous match for FC Goa, I think I'll probably have to take his name and get back probably by tomorrow's show. I'll mention who was that commentator who mentioned that point. But moving to Chiranjit now. Two teams who are fighting for playoff, and uh, what do you what do you reckon here? Because we are expecting an explosive match. What do you think may happen? Yeah, well, uh, FC Goa, uh, 29 goals in 13 matches. Uh, the only team that has scored more goals is Bengaluru FC, and they have played uh, two games extra, uh, 30 yeah. goals so far. Ben- FC Goa are surviving on their attack. Uh, their, their defense is one of the worst. I think uh, second worst after uh, Delhi Dynamos. Uh, 25 goals they have let in. And uh, that that's that's a bit of uh, an embarrassing situation. So what was happening when they were playing Bengaluru FC uh, was that the way, it, it was strange the way they just got uh, completely contained. You know, Manvi Singh was uh, not really uh, at his best. Korominas was making those runs, but he was being cordoned off. Uh, Man, uh, I think Mandar Rao Desai, he was making uh, uh, runs up the flanks, trying to cross. Everything just seemed to be on lockdown for uh, FC Goa. And that, I think, more than a defeat, it's the way the, uh, the uh, attack, which is what uh, FC Goa are just depending upon, the way it got called out should be the one that uh, really worries uh, Lobera at this point. So I'm pretty sure that how many days it has been since then. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, they played the game uh, on 9th February, and uh, it's it's been five six days. I'm pretty sure he went back and he doubled down on the attack. You know, it's it's not about uh, it's. It's not the worst day uh, that your club is having if you're conceding two goals against a team like Bengaluru FC, who are on a very different level from everybody else in ISL anyway. But you you don't really are not able to make a difference with your attack. That That is worrying. So he probably worked out all different kinds of strategies. He probably made sure of, uh, you know, just making it extra explosive. And and that makes them such a contrast to what Chennai and FC are, right? Chennai and FC, mm. 21 goals scored, 18 uh, conceded. Nothing is out of the world. Nothing is the you know the best in the league or uh, best uh, best in the country or whatever. You won't use any of those words for them. But they just get the job done. But even yeah. they they got called out though. Delhi Dynamos ended up you know holding them one one. Mm. So. Yeah, Chennai and FC, uh, they would also have something to think about because a team like uh, Delhi Dynamos, of course, the, the goal they got uh, was uh, a Kalu Uche penalty. But, you know, why did you give it away in the first place? So all of those things will be on uh, the Chennai coach's mind and you're going up against a very explosive team. So a yeah. measure versus explosion, as uh, as Kevin said, I really think FC Goa are going to overpower this because uh, Chennai and FC, recently the defense has not been at its optimum. So, it, it and, and of course, uh, FC Goa will be, I think they will have that extra drive because uh, they're not in the top four zone till now. And of course, they're mm-hmm. playing at home. 
so uh, yeah it's it's, it's going to be it's going to be attack from the get go from the very first minute and you might see chennai nfc just go back into a shell just to keep up with it they they will they will want to uh, you know just weather out the initial attack and if fc goa managed to break through in that in that first 20 or 30 minutes then you have chennai nfc in major trouble because fc okay. goa's intensity will not go down and chennai nfc if if they assume a defensive posture it will be very hard for them to shift gears and actually push back against an explosive thing like this so right can i come to you before i wrap up this uh, discussion on this match uh, now when i'm looking at uh, you know this i mean not the numbers in per se but when i'm looking at the last two games that these teams have played they both have suffered a draw and a loss okay mm-hmm. and interestingly when you look at that both have suffered loss against bengaluru like the and a draw against the goa had a draw against northeast mean match and had a draw against delhi so it's it's like you're losing you've lost your last match against the table toppers in wally made it to the top 4 and you've got a draw following after the loss it's like against the team who is at the end the bottom of the points table and now when both the teams come uh, against each other to make it to the top 4 What do you think is going in the dressing room? What are the coaches saying? Now, because you are, you know, you are a coach, and what what do you think you would, if you were put in that position, what will be going on in your mind, and what will be the talk that's going among the the players? I think the motivation is very clear. You know, uh, you win, you get in the top spot, uh, the top four spot, and you know, there's, there's no need for sort of looking at the back end, the performance that you know that really would disappoint. But I think something that that is there for looking forward to. I think there's there's nothing more to add from the coach. Uh, the players already you know look pumped up, and and that's the reward. You know you get in the three points and you're you know getting closer to what you want to go ahead with. Uh, then FC Goa, you know to some extent I've seen uh, just in the recent past uh, they, they've tried a lot of uh, players in the midfield and the striking uh, positions. That lead that leads to you know these issues. Especially, they, they've got a few new signings. Uh, Mark Chepinos has come in. Uh, there's Hugo. There's another player from Morocco, uh, under whom, uh, under he, he's played under Sergio Lobero. But uh, these guys had just come in recently. You won't expect them to come in uh, fire off straight off. So that's the reason. Uh, they, you, there is a slow movement from these players, and uh, they are brought in at you know crucial junctures. So you won't expect them to you know go out and uh, get in the flow that uh, the earlier team had there was a fixed you know, uh, combination that uh, lobero worked with uh, brand was there uh, there was uh, johu at the back so you know, after these signings come in uh, there, there has to be a trial or try trial and error done by by the coach so that maybe you know something it works in your favor it doesn't work in your favor but for what chennai and fc i don't think there's a problem over there they've got a fixed mm-hmm. set of players who've been delivering for a quite long time It is one of those days. Maybe you know uh, it doesn't work out for you, but I, I think they, they are in a much much better position than FC Goa because they've got a fixed, you no know, delivery set of players uh, rather than you no know, injury concerns uh, for FC Goa. So overall, mm-hmm. I, I think uh, the motivation is there for both the set of players uh, to get in and show their best. Yeah. Okay then. Let's see how this goes about. But it's also that uh, Joffrey is back in the uh, city to watch uh, the game and. Uh, we know of him you know his uh, when these two played in the 2015 finals he had scored probably everybody thought it was a winner for fc goa but then only in the late uh, probably the injury time which and then came back and scored so let's see if uh, joffrey brings in some good luck or bad luck for fc goa tonight now moving on with uh, i league fixture we're not today it's tomorrow 5:30 pm mention is the weekend we have loads of matches to look at probably we won't have in a stand look at this but significance for this game is aizol need to perform and they need to perform under santosh kashyap randeep <laughs> <laughs> how do you see that happening uh, well uh, you know what if if what did, what would really be uh, you know interesting is if indian arrows uh, make it into the super cup directly into the group stage that would be a remarkable achievement in my opinion uh, past uh, past teams of indian arrows have never been in the top 6 or something like that they have never really been close to the top half to, top half of the table uh, mm. but 
Indian Arrows went and beat Churchill Brothers. And uh, Churchill Brothers were not actually playing away in that game. It was the same home ground that they share. So they they actually beat Churchill Brothers at their own home. And uh, and and that just tells you that the team is sort of coming together. They are uh, fighting till the last moment. They are uh, uh, you know well knit. The, the the you know of course it's a, it's a all Indian squad, a uh, young squad. It has a great core uh, of players that have stayed together. Strong team spirit, which is actually very surprising to see in Indian Arrows because past Indian Arrows teams have always had uh, young players who are just trying to prove themselves rather than fighting for the team or something like that. Here you have players who are fighting as a unit. Here, here you have players who are helping out each other, and and that's that's a very new flavor. So, uh, so. It it kind of actually reminds me of uh, Isol FC, you know, uh, at their peak, how they had uh, young Indian players uh, with a very uh, strong sense of uh, team unity that were just grinding out till the last minute to try and find uh, you know one goal that will just put them over the edge. That's what actually made them champions last season. So it's it's a it's a strange uh, you know uh, switching of roles. That we are seeing now, Isol FC is acting like you know one of the big clubs in uh, in the top division, uh, like East Bengal Mohan Bagan. You're not happy with the coach, you fire him, uh, or whatever it is. Uh, you get into trouble uh, with the IFF for throwing uh, missiles at the referee. So all of those things it just suddenly seems like Isol FC have evolved and become one of those big clubs, and you have Indian arrows who have somewhat taken on the mantle of of what they were trying to do in the past so it, it i'm i'm more interested in how i uh, uh, indian arrows do in this game uh, if they win they will be in conversation they will be in within touching distance of a top 6 finish which i think uh, will be so significant you will see these players just going straight into the group stage uh, uh, which is which is uh, way more than most people would have hoped for them As well as see, um, well, they are still there. They they'll also have to fight if they want to be in the top six. And uh, they have a new coach, so I don't think even the most uh, what do you call it most hardened as well as see fan would also like be totally sure that yeah 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 we're gonna we're gonna up the whole day. You know, Santosh Kishor will come and will beat everybody. But um, yeah, he should get time, Santosh Kishor. if we uh, took to get things in order but uh, you know uh, it just it just doesn't seem like as well fc are on that much of a high right now they the last big performance came against zobahan but of course they lost lost that match also uh, it just doesn't seem like they are winning these days and uh, I, i'm for some some reason i mean if if this was happening one month earlier i would have Not had any hesitation saying yeah yeah as well if yeah uh, they're gonna take this one, but right now I'm I'm having trouble visualizing as well if he actually going up there and uh, putting on that gritty show that gets them the win because Indian arrows seem to have more uh, stamina than them, better speed than them, and and frankly a stronger core, and they're not rocked by coach being sacked or something like that. They they already have their rhythm. So strangely, I I think Indian arrows are the favorites against defending champions, and and I feel ridiculous that I am saying this. Well, I come to you, Kevin. I'm like I'm just disappointed in Chennai. He just wasted time talking about Indian arrows. I mean, who doesn't know Indian arrows are playing good? It's not about today. It's not about or tomorrow. In fact, it's not about Matos and his boys. It's about two things that we have. We are waiting to see if it will if it will be a match made. uh you know because uh, there is Isol FC and then there is Santosh Kashyap you know so Kevin I hate to put you in a spot like this you're also a coach but then uh I won't do that I won't put you in the shoes of Santosh Kashyap but um he is he is expected to deliver he is not given time he doesn't have time in his hands he needs to deliver and he needs to deliver tomorrow at 5:30 so what do you have to say he's going against a team that has been playing well and they are nothing to lose as of the title or anything but yes they will want to finish in the top 6 but hey as even otherwise we've been talking good about them so it's not about the indian arrows all eyes will be on santosh kashyap and idol fc 
could we uh, be there at the at the time when Sandeep Kashyap was making his first press conference? <laughs> <as> a, <laughs> I wish. I <laughs> Let's just go to Goa. <laughs> Let us go take it to Goa. <laughs> that will be something to hear, you know, uh, questioning uh, what what went wrong and what what are your plans. I think this time uh, we already seen uh, the Chiranjeev interview with uh, yeah. Uh, Sandeep Kashyap. He's already torn down, you know, the expectations. Yeah, and, his uh, answers are pretty, pretty okay. Yeah, so I think uh, the lessons are already learned, and uh, obviously he's a big coach. Uh, uh, he's a pro license holder, you know, not an uh, easy thing to get, and. Uh, I respect for him for that uh, having a, a good degree uh, i th- i think uh, to get in a coach at so such a late point in in the league is always difficult yeah. for anyone even the players uh, yeah, i'm sure they have they have they had no other option but to go for him because yeah no. <laughs> so this you know it, it, this understanding you know why has he been brought in it's not for the i league obviously i i i league uh, uh, the top four is this you know It's a tough challenge, but a fresh challenge would be uh, the AFC Cup uh, and the Super Cup. Obviously, they make make it through. Uh, so they are the bigger targets than than being you know performing well in the I League. So I League can be something where uh, Santosh Kishore does try out what he might be seeing, uh, you know, experiment in the AFC Cup and the Super Cup. So don't expect too much from Azure FC in the first game under a new a new new coach. Uh, but against Indian arrows, when when we see a team that you know highly motivated uh, youngsters is running on uh, on no, they're just running all the time. They're just never giving up. Even in the last 90th minute, we see the energy that they bring in, uh, the changes that the, that the coach brings in. So it, it's going to be tough for as well. I would say, you know, I would slightly be a, in agreement with Chiranjeev that but they hold an edge. Uh, Indian arrows do hold an edge over as well because. Now they've got nothing to lose. They are a development side. They exempt from the relegation, and they play against defending champions. And where else I guess uh, you know Goa has been uh, one of the few home this season. Once they played at Delhi for so many so long, and now they played at uh, Goa for so long. So they've got, got two home grounds, I would say. So there's really nothing to set them back. Uh, there's no. It's always forward-looking for them. There's nothing that uh, past performance are going to be having in any effect on these youngsters. So Santosh Kishore, uh, you know, probably even if he uh, gets a one-all draw, I, I think he should be satisfied because it's not easy in your first game. And Indian arrows are highly motivated. You know, it's mm-hmm. two contrasting situations uh, at the clubs right now. Uh, so uh, hopefully we should see some goals, uh, not just you know. uh baseball chances like as well have been doing mm. and uh, probably you know a road to recovery for as well okay well let's see how that goes now because uh, you know that also remind me that it's not goa and we have to pack if we are good if you want to listen to santos kashyap which been played in delhi you now in the arrows so you never know probably santos kashyap will be motivated at the fact that his birthday is in celebrated as i think coach day or something so uh probably that should motivate him you know say hey it's in my place let's just go get the game because i don't his, think his, uh, one uh, point his birthday is celebrated as coach day in uh, delhi coach delegation day in delhi, in yeah, delhi yeah but uh, in yeah. maharashtra it's celebrated as relegation day <laughs> of course for everyone it will be <laughs> so uh, well, uh, now uh, I just missed what I was supposed to say, but then yeah, that's all, guys. Uh, tomorrow, let's see how fast they are. I mean, I think that's the most exciting game because uh, okay, Kevin, Kevin mentioned one point would satisfy Sandeep Kishore, but I don't think one point would satisfy Aizar and their fans. So let's see who gets the last laugh. And uh, well, now it's also uh, I mean, we often forget to you know look at the calendar and wish players birthdays, but it so happened that today I looked at. And it was Anish Adhikarika's birthday, so also wishing him all the best wishes of birthdays, and you know, maybe may he maybe see him play well for the national team and the clubs that he plays. Now currently he's playing for them. Straight food. Let's see if they can make it to the top four. Now that's all, guys. Like, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon to get updates of our new episode. Uh, let us know what you think about all these things that we spoke about today in on the comment section below. And if you want to talk to us directly, you can do that. Ranjit Oja, Bose underscore Kevin, Sujit Matu, Mali Four. These are our Twitter handles. Follow the TFG Football Twitter handle to get all the updates in Indian football. You can also get onto our website, thefangers. dot com. And in case you haven't yet read the interviews and discussion, you can do that as well. Have a great day, guys. Cheers. Enjoy. Bye bye.
He bends down to test the warm water for his bath. He comes here to quench his thirst for a hot shower and some podcasts. You can witness how he enjoys having other people talk about cool stuff in his bathroom. Indeed, it helps him with his loneliness. You can find more of his pieces on ivmpodcast.com. Your one-stop destination where you can check out the coolest Indian podcasts. Happy listening.